hanging out with a young man I got to meet last year, actually. I think he got me going. Uh, you've seen some videos where this guy calls me the future Hall of Famer. Well, it's this guy right here. He's doing exactly what I did when I was young, and I wanted the experienced guys to remember me and know me. You know, that's how you do it right there. When Absolutely. you catch more flies with sugar than vinegar or something like that is the line. Marty Sakala is with me now. He's the Rock Sports Network and also RSN Trackside. He's been very, very – see how he turned the mic so I wouldn't have to count on my memory uh, to, to do that. <laughs> Marty, uh, what are you doing here? Are you having fun at Super Dirt Week? Absolutely. Uh, the second Super Dirt Week I've ever attended in person this is my first time covering it for rock sports network uh and also uh race pro weekly i'm doing a little bit of writing for them uh this weekend and actually for the entire season so far my first time doing that with them second season at uh rock sports network and i'm having a blast is it a little intimidating for a young guy like you who hasn't been around as much to meet some of these guys, or are you doing pretty well at, at that initial meet and greet? I think I'm doing really well at that initial meet and greet. I just show the mic flag and show them who I'm with and uh, get a little conversation. A bunch of the drivers I've known well for a while, like Stuart Friesen, I've known him before. I started at RSN. I think you can say the same thing with Matt Williams and Max McLaughlin, so I talk with them the most. I think I think the toughest one is uh, Matt Shepard. Like the first time I got a little <laughs> bit nervous, but this season I've gotten a little bit used to him, especially at Genesee Speedway after the uh, after the Gladiator race that he won. Yeah, he just loves being in front of the camera in a month. Absolutely. So he's old school for the guys who don't know Matt. He just assumed race and hang out with his buddies afterwards. He, he, that's just the way he is. Where do you want to be someday? Because I know you do still work in radio, right? Yes, I do. Uh, I work at CJ Country. I am a... Uh, DJ on Sundays there, and I also do a, do a lot of the production stuff, putting a lot of the commercials. But main thing I want to do is play-by-play, uh, -play. okay. and I do a bunch of uh, do, right now I do a bunch of i racing play-by-play. -play Good commentary. way to practice. Yeah, exactly. I, I think do, it's harder because you only see what's on the screen. Where if you're a tower to racetrack, you could look wherever you want. Is that fair to say? Absolutely. But luckily, technology has changed. I've got a uh, I've got a specific program that actually what I use for uh, for live timing and for my graphics on iRacing and it tells me when a specific driver is spun out or go off track oh, so no I'll kidding. click on that look at the replay and see what happened and it's just great I love doing okay. it I do a dirt league on uh, Mondays a lot of you probably heard of the coast to coast racing league I have heard and of that yes yes I think you did voiceover for them in the past Roger and Preston say hi by the way oh cool uh, but I do that on Mondays never met them they seem like cool guys they though. are <laughs> rest of the week I do a lot of asphalt stuff all right you ever looking for a color commentator you uh Make sure to look me up absolutely. at some point down the I mean, road. Absolutely. So as far as yourself and your career, do you want to stay with racing? Would you rather be in radio? Oh. Do you want to do production and TV or something? Racing all the way. The main goal is to be in a NASCAR, be a play-by-play -play commentator. This is, okay. a, this is a great start. Reporting, doing some sideline stuff. Like I'm, I'm doing what you're doing from time to time when you're – uh, unable to do sideline reporting at Land of Legends. I usually fill in for Yeah, you. yeah, when I go to the tower, Marty is the one who. Yep. And I got to give you credit. You did a darn good job because I remember you were doing the autograph night. Yes. And you weren't really sure if you could talk the whole way through. That's so I remember going, Marty, if you need to set it up the tower, just say back to you, Doug. 20 minutes, and I kept it straight on. Yeah, he never sent it back up once, and he never skipped a beat. And actually, the tough thing with that, too, for those of you who don't do this kind of stuff, he's got an earpiece. Yes. And in his ear is our director, Art. Yep. And several times, he told you specific things to do. So you need to be able to listen while you're still talking and Absolutely. not lose your train of thought. That's not easy, is it? Not at all. Not at all. It's it's just, just a thing of science. I get used to it. Well, it's just like anything else, just like the racers. You need mileage. You need yeah. to do it more. Uh, like I tell some of the drivers when they're maybe a little nervous on an interview, it's like the more you do this, the better you get. It's just like racing, right? Absolutely. And the main thing uh, when it comes to this is prep. you got to make sure you do your homework when wanting to talk with these drivers specifically. So I come up with a bunch of questions for all the drivers in advance, and then that's how we get it going. Of course, sometimes you need to be flexible enough. Yeah. Like when they open the door to another subject, you can't just rattle off five questions. you got to roll with it. Absolutely. Sometimes you got to follow up, uh, keep going with the topic that they want to go to. Mm -hmm. so, it's true. It, yeah. it, it takes time. But how old are you now? I am 23. So you got plenty of time. You Absolutely. got into this six years uh, earlier than I did. So yeah. you, you already got a head start. Absolutely. I just graduated from SUNY Brock about two years ago. I'm still working with them, doing play-by-play -play for a bunch of sports. I saw that on your Facebook page. Doing That's nice. football, basketball starts up in November, Gold Golden Eagles. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm loving it. Loving the, loving the Everybody grind. has a sport I think they're better at. Yes. Mine was baseball. Mine is okay. basketball. It's basketball. That would be my number two probably yes. would be basketball. So and I what about play, that aspect? I never even played basketball, by the way. I'll add that. I just okay. started doing that. was the first oh, one. See, I, I was a jock called. as a kid. I played everything I could. Yeah. Would you like to go that way? Because I've always said for somebody in broadcasting, 
you can't be too rigid in where you think you might go because there might be other opportunities out there, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. And I got so many experience in a lot of sports, football, basketball, baseball, lacrosse. I'm starting to get into volleyball and stuff like that. And it, it's great. I love doing all those sports at SUNY Brockport. And I don't know what the heck that was. Yeah, back Golf cart just backfired, Probably. I think. Probably. But, yeah, in case something happens where racing isn't the place to go and it's still going to be the place I want to go, if that isn't the place, though, I got a bunch of these backups. I got knowledge in a bunch of sports, so I can be a utility guy. I'm happy to talk to you, man. I've been, uh, I'm, I'm going to do anything I can to help you down the road, so please, Appreciate anything it. I can do, you just let me know. Hit the blue E, guys. Every time, That's right, he's ready right to point, there. too. So every time we're talking to somebody cool like Marty here, somebody who you might have heard him various things, you might have seen him around the track, now you a little bit know a little bit more about him. Have fun, Marty. Appreciate it, Doug. Thanks.